This week on Fireys, you need someone you can depend on. Turn, get the water up. Hey, we go. <laughs> two fire stations, two platoons. It is definitely the best job in the world. Jules, just concentrate for a second. <laughs> we trust them. It's OK. They trust each other. You're putting your life in someone else's hands. They put their lives on the line. When I leave the house, I do have a, a ritual where I make sure I give everyone a kiss and a hug. To protect you. Don't worry. starts when somebody else's day has gone really bad. Tonight... Collapse zones are to be maintained around the entire complex. When we first turned up, I thought it was just going to be another mop-up job. We were wrong. It turned out to be massive. From fire... <laughs> ..to flood. We're going to lose all power. Yeah, they'll give me a call when I'm required. An expectant dad... Still good. 18 month old male who has had a fit. A medical emergency. Fire brigade. And. You're an awfully good looking fireman. <laughs> it's all in a day's work. Once in your career, you're going to get the big one. You don't know when that big one's coming. It could be any time. It's probably when you least expect it. You've always got to have your wits about you and be ready to go. You never know when it's going to happen, and you never know what you're going to. It's the start of Glebe's night shift, and their first call out is a fire at a 15 hectare paper recycling factory in Sydney's south. When you think about how much paper and combustible material is in that building, it kicks in how big that fire can actually be. So, Deputy Commissioners, this Senate Code 4, that's not a good sign. Fire is rated a tenth alarm, so they need to prepare for the worst. The higher the alarm is, the more resources they bring in. So, a tenth alarm is. is, is Pretty massive. The smoke's coming from inside, isn't it? Fire comms, pumper 18 and MCED. We are code three. We turned up and it didn't really seem like too much was going on. There's a lot of smoke, but not too much fire, so it might have just been that the fire had actually burned out and was smouldering. But looks can deceive. Oh, there's smoke building up here. Yeah. Oh, it's just bad. It's Tomo and George may have just predicted the big one. Incident controller Mark Wybro is running management team Delta from a mobile command centre. Basically, it's surrounded by waste paper, four to five metres deep. Makes it very difficult for firefighters. One of our main strategies is to prevent the fire that's in this building moving into this building. There's a three metre gap there and we've concentrated our major aerials on cutting off the fire at that point. He's coordinating 20 pumps and 100 fireys from all over Sydney and every single available aerial appliance is here as well. Due to the construction, the age of the building and the heat impact, um, we're losing structural integrity. I mean, that's one of the reasons why we weren't in there with hoses trying to fight the smaller fires inside, because it can just turn like that and all of a sudden consume the entire building. Collapse zones now surround the building. The controller has the unenviable task of keeping his fireys on the fire and out of harm's way. Yeah, difficult. When we first turned up, I thought it was just going to be another mop-up job. We were wrong. 
Turned out to be massive. While well, Glebe bunkers in for a long, anxious night, Liverpool's start to the day is filled with apprehension of a different kind. Really rang it. I gave her a call before. She's still getting contractions. It's just I'll a waiting game. Yeah, they'll give me a call when I'm required. So we've been pretty, pretty excited about the, the third baby. My wife would like a girl. Um, I'd like a girl too, but you know, get what you're given. So three boys would be all right as well. Her meal is a little bit outnumbered at the moment. Today's first call out could be just the distraction Venus needs. Okay, so we're going to the uh, HPM building, which is HP HPM Le Grand Electrical Products. It's a sprinkler and smoke system. The panel's located in the main foyer. Pillar height is right yep. turn, right turn. The sprinklers have unleashed a torrent and the power is still on. A very dangerous combination. We've got a uh, power bullet up here, sir. Pull back until we isolate the power, please. Roger that, passing the word. This is a good way to get the water out. It's easy access. All right, run the squeeze. Here's the source of the flood, but fireys can't shut it down until the power is cut off. We're going to lose all power, so be prepared for that. While Glebe's D platoon wait for instructions at their factory emergency, the thick smoke is at the point the fireys call the flashover. If it flashes over, it's going to be well over 1,000 degrees and, and it's impossible to survive that, so you've got to get out before that happens. And that's what's happening now, so that, that smoke's catching on fire and it's spreading quickly through the building. We have increased fire activity uh, on the roof of the building. The plan of attack tonight is surround and drown. For now, all D Platoon can do is psych themselves up for the sheer magnitude of the job ahead. We're pulling out front four, relocating it, and there's potential for collapse, over. This will be one big pile of rubble by the end of the night, we think. Marshmallows? I don't think it'd be a good idea to go in there right now, no. We probably wouldn't come back out. Hundred Sydney fireys are no match for this raging factory inferno in Sydney's south. Oh, here we go. The best weapons in their armoury are the aerial appliances and the Brontos. And that's where D Platoon steps in. The strong northeast winds make it a tough job. We were shooting water from the Bronto cage uh, straight into the wind, so we weren't really getting an effective amount of water on the fire. Yeah, keep going. That, see where you are, just try and drench that area, that's it. Well done. Right on point. Jimmy and Jules are on Bronto duty tonight. Jimmy at the controls and Jules in the sky, his equivalent to fiery heaven. I first fell in love with the Bronto as soon as I had my first shift here, and it was love at first sight. You sort of run your own race a little bit more because it's just the two of you. You don't have a boss on board. Yeah, you can see that little bit of uh, flame coming through the roof. Am I hitting yeah, that now? Or? Five, so just stay where you are. And you'll make a dent in it. All right, let's see. It's taking control of that building there. That, that building is uh, hard up and adjacent to another building in Sector C, which is behind that. We're trying to prevent it from getting into that building. Not having a lot of luck at the moment. Well, that's isolated now. They've, they've shut the power down. Just confirm power's off. So we've had a, a, a sprinkler go off in a testing facility for uh, a major electrical component company. It's not clear what activated the sprinkler. The challenge now is to shut it off. 
Gordo is sent to assess how widespread the water creep is. I require more assistance here and some way of this water. It's actually heading back into the factory. While the fireys prepare the pumps, Venus checks if he should leave early. Still good. But the baby is proving as stubborn as this sprinkler. Ten hours since the first emergency call to this factory fire, it threatens adjoining buildings. Glebe's D platoon is giving it all it's got. Yes, I shall be receiving Charlie. But high winds and huge flames work against them. It can kind of feel like you're, you're fighting a losing battle. We have flames and smoke. Uh... The chimneys have just caught on fire, basically. With that, that means they're metal that's actually burning. There's so much heat in there that it's finding a way to exhaust, and it's actually going up the chimney like it would in your own house. But it's so hot that it's burning a hole in the side of the chimney. Fire is a big, angry beast. Something that's that big and that powerful kind of takes your breath away. You sort of want to reel back, but you're kind of drawn into it at the same time. It's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a love-hate thing, I guess. A sprinkler system has inundated this electrics factory near Liverpool. At last, a pair of pliers shuts off the water. Yeah, that's, that's done. And now we've got to start, start getting rid of all the water. It's a big job, and Venus doesn't want to miss the arrival of his third child. No reception. Yeah, but I've got, have you got a reception? Yeah, a little bit. Now you know where code four. What Venus really wants to hear is a code five, which is a return to base and hopefully some baby news. But there's still some hard labour required at the factory. At last, the crisis contained, thanks to a combination of buckets, brooms and pumps and a simple pair of sprinkler pliers. 12 hours after the fireys were called to this factory blaze, better conditions finally allow Glebe to gain some control. At the moment, we've got crews on both sides of the structure, so we look like we're going to hold it at that point. Well, I'll, I'll ask uh, our esteemed leader. Dino, is that all right if Jules here has something to eat? Food. Tell him as soon as you put the fire out, then you can have the food. <laughs> the boys in the cage, obviously, they're up there. You don't want to bring it down and up too often. Obviously, if you do that, you take water off the fire, the fire's going to grow. So you, you can't really do that until you get control of it. So the boys in the cage can go without food and, and refreshments for quite some time. By 3 a.m., the beast is finally tamed. Like one every 10 years, you get a fire like that. They did a good job. Ariel did its job. Yeah, yeah, always happy with them, mate. Always happy with them. It would definitely be the biggest fire I've seen. The dawn of a new day for Liverpool. Ambulance emergency, what suburb, please? Liverpool. Tell me what happened. Are you going up? Eyes are going up. Is he shaking? Yeah. How old is your baby? One and a half years. Is he breathing? Is he breathing? Yes. Hello? I can't hear you. 
Okay. 18 month old male and who has had a fit. Patient is conscious yeah. and breathing. Police and Ambos call in the fireys because they can't locate the emergency caller. Ambos are here. Yeah. We've tried ringing phones. So where did the call come from? The well, line came from this address. So the call came from this address? Yes, yeah, so yeah. the driver in the landline bag is... We got inside this door, but the unit, um, we were ringing mobiles and we could hear the mobiles inside. We weren't sure if anyone was inside. So we actually um, called the fire brigade to help us gain entry into that door. Yeah. Without a reaction from inside the apartment, they don't know what they're going to find on the other side of the door. Well, being a grandmother, if there's a child in danger, it makes you want to get in there and get to that child as soon as you possibly can. The urgency level goes up a little bit. Hello, please. Liverpool's B platoon has had to break down a door to help police and ambos get access to an apartment after an emergency call from a distressed parent. Hello, police. Liverpool police, hello. Is here? With the door open, emergency services can do their job. The place is empty, so where's the patient? How do you know what happened? We got a call, 18 month old baby had a fit of some sort. Oh. So we've come here to assist the ambos to get in, but when we got here, there's no answer. We've tried ringing, no answer. So we thought best thing to get I in, an have a look around, but there's nobody here. Their car's gone, they could have gone to the hospital themselves, but the problem is, is that we've contacted Liverpool Hospital and nobody's presented with an 18 month old baby that's had a fit. So we don't mm. really know where they are. Daylight leaves few reminders of the massive firefighting effort that put this paper factory fire out. Now, investigator Steve Apps needs to find out how it started. First, it was like it was a massive uh, foreboding sort of situation, but as most things, if you take a close look at it and you spend a bit of time thinking about it, you eventually get an idea where it started. And that's what this job's all about. Where did the fire start and how did it start? That degree of damage relative to other damage left and right of it sort of it also lends the idea that it's that it was in this, this area. The next big question for Steve is was the fire deliberately lit? Very difficult area to get into. It's less likely to be a deliberate fire. So if it's not deliberate, then it must be accidental. Turns out Sydney's weather has a part to play. After a deluge of rain, three or four days later, a hot day, these bales of compressed cardboard ignite. That's my working hypothesis at the moment, that this was an accidental fire uh, created by spontaneous combustion. A simple explanation for a night Glebe won't forget in a hurry. As far as square meterage goes and the amount of red stuff that was coming out of the top of that building, it goes down as the biggest fire that I've ever attended in my 15 years. After accessing the apartment of an emergency caller, Gordo and Irene need to repair the door they've just broken, while police track down the occupants. We've since been told there's been a 20-month-old baby presented at the hospital and we're just going to head to the hospital now to see if it all matches up and that's the child that we were concerned about. A few minutes later, the father of the sick child turns up. Good, thanks. Morning. Good baby. Okay. He's in the emergency. Right, it's about to get a moment. Yeah. Ah, there you go. Come on, sweetie. Here you come. I'll come in. Um, I'll go grab some details off you, sir. I'll just do a quick report, sir, but we had to come in. So. What's wrong with your son? Uh, actually, he had a temperature. It appears a panicked dad couldn't wait for the ambulance and drove his son to the hospital without yeah. telling the authorities. We just took the home phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just had a limited range. Limited, yeah. Yeah, very scary and was very, you know, what to do, we don't know at yeah. the time. Is your yeah. wife OK? She's down there? Yeah, she's all right. We're all back together. Thank you, Lord. Bye-bye. Thank you, Lord. Baby Ajitesh was kept in hospital overnight. Wow. 
A happy ending. The only casualty, a broken door fixed by the fireys. But Glebe is about to find out not all breakages are acceptable. <laughs> if you go through my chair, I'll belt the daylights out of you. <laughs> The mystery of baby Ajitesh now solved, Liverpool can turn its attention to other baby news. It comes in a much anticipated text from Venus. All right. Well, it's a boy. Mr. Blake George Williams, uh, eight pounds and eight ounces. Amelia and the baby doing great. He's finally got three children, and uh, now he can man his own pump crew at home. Happy days. Fully recovered from the all-nighter at the paper factory, Deep Platoon's challenge today is to help the age group most at risk in a fire. Today is one of the more enjoyable parts of the job. It's the Sabre program, which is the smoke alarm and battery replacement for the elderly. How are you? I'm well, thank you. How are you? Good, thank you. That's We've right. come to change the battery in your smoke alarm. This That's the one, yes. Not all the old people out there can actually change their batteries. They don't have someone that can help them out. They don't have a family member that can come over and change that battery. So that's one of the things that we do. Are you really a fireman or are you an actor? <laughs> Definitely not an actor. That's the actually. <laughs> You're an awfully good looking fireman. <laughs> oh, Georgie. He's looking enough, isn't he? Oh, he's a good looking man. He's a very good looking man. I wouldn't mind him holding me and getting me down from the balcony. <laughs> Duracell actually donate those batteries. We also encourage people to change their batteries in their smoke alarms when they change their clocks. So when the clocks go back an hour, daylight savings, change your smoke alarm battery at the same time. I think we'll get the fire brigade here in a minute. <laughs> that chair. If you go through my chair, I'll belt the daylights out of you. I've got a set of steps. Oh, come on, handsome. Thank you very much. You're, you're going. What a shame. <laughs> it's been good fun. Thank you very much. Thanks for the red faces. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bye bye. I rather bye. like your braces too. They're pretty smart, aren't they? <laughs> Just in time for the end of their shift, baby Blake makes an appearance at Liverpool. There he is. Hello. There you go. Another Williams. Oh, Venus, he looks like you. Very strong, poor little boy. Oh, is this something extra for oh, the baby? Thank you. <laughs> How's it all going at home? Good? Yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> as good as it gets when right. lack of sleep. Next one will be a girl. Number four will be a girl. Oh, no. no. <laughs> Beautiful, so well done, guys. Thanks, thank mate. Next week on Fireys. Where there's smoke. So what's the smoke? And a close call in Liverpool where life is on the line. <laughs>